Hey, what's up everybody? Sammy here. Today, I will give you a full walkthrough of Xiaomi's latest EV, the SU7. I will include a detailed interior design walkthrough, but not exterior design because I've done a video about it three months ago. Go and check it out if you are interested. I cover the software part, explaining how people, car and home interactions work, and finally, the driving experience. I've got to say, this may not be the best production we presented compared to those giant professional teams, but I promise this is the most hard fit video my team has presented. And we're trying to show you as much as possible with the limited resources we have. I almost lost my phone during this video shooting. So, click to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I always do these kinds of fresh reviews the first time, just for you guys. I want to pick up where we left off last time, which we didn't get a chance to explore. The floor and the cabin. The room is quite compact and uneven. But it may be enough for some of your clothes or golf gear. As for the trunk, we find that if it detects something in the way when it's closing, it will bounce back, which feels safer. As you'd expect, the trunk may not look that spacious, and it's actually not that spacious. One good thing though is there is a hidden deep space under the plate. Besides, you can fold back seats to get a bit more space to put more things. I can imagine it would be useful when I could transport a moderate e bike By the way, if you want to know whether the rear wing of the Xiaomi SU7 car pinches your hand when it's folded, I try to late and it does pinch a little, but eventually it will spring up if it detects something lying in the middle. Anyway, let's move inside. Xiaomi offers several interior colors for you to choose from. I've seen they offer all black, which is more for businessmen or mafias. <laughs> Just kidding. This all red, which looks expensive and premium, or this combination of gray and black, which they gray leaning towards white. This design is extremely minimalist and premium. Which one is your favorite? Leave your comment below. Let's go into a little bit more detail. You can adjust the driver's seat here, and that is the speed yeah, you can feel. When I adjust it all the way back, there is much space left for the back passengers. But it's great for the driver, who can basically lie down to drive. <laughs> also, you can lay the seat back to the almost flat position. Perfect for taking a nap, what do you think? You can also adjust the seat cushion up and down, all using these two keys. A bit more about this seat. You can see the leather finish, the stitches, all giving the look of a sporty car, isn't it? There is even a handle, and there is a small reading light there too. Just press on it to turn it on or off. The steering wheel is also adjustable. There are two mirrors on top with a magnetic cover. You can switch to the side you want to block sunlight. My first impression of the car is that it's really well made. Though this is the first car from a phone manufacturer that put a lot of effort into refining the details. It looks premium and elegant, though they left very few parts as they are, like the trunk cover. Uh, maybe Xiaomi thinks, oh, who would look at that part anyway? <laughs> the next thing that impresses me is the storage space. There is an abundance of it. Check out the compartment under the armrest, where I can put a bag, some spare shows, and there is even a place for fragrances along with the compartments for other small items. Behind the armrest, there is a compartment housing a mini refrigerator, which is definitely a good place to store some beverages. Above it is the air conditioner ventilation. Additionally, there are two wireless charging spots on top. There are spots in the doors to keep umbrellas. It feels like they've utilized every inch of the space cleverly. Altogether, there is a vast amount of storage space throughout the car, which I personally find very appealing. One thing I have to mention is that the Xiaomi SU7 is customizable. How? The physical buttons bore on the central control screen are detachable. If you prefer a clean touch screen interface, you can easily detach them. Now on that, you might replace the bar with other accessories in the future. Moving on, there's a small dual dashboard that can be installed or left out as per preference. You can also adjust both the left and right dials separately. Furthermore, there's a small fragrance dispenser at the bottom, which is also detachable and customizable. Then there is the wireless charging stand for mobile devices. It not only holds your device, but also charges wirelessly. Beneath it, there is a three-in-one product, a flashlight, a window breaker for emergencies, and a power bank. Now, let's move to the software part. 
For this section, it's all in Chinese, but I will try to explain everything in English so you can understand easily. I have no idea when the Xiaomi S U7 will go global, but if it's available, I will definitely let you know to subscribe for more updates. So, bear with me on that, and if you want to skip this part, I suggest you don't do that, because the interaction between the phone and the core system is one of its kind, which sets it apart from other manufacturers. So, this is the 3D real-time model of the vehicle, which serves as the initial interface. In addition, there's a dock bar at the bottom, which includes the home, indicators for phone connectivity, settings, and more. Similar to the phone interface, the dock bar here allows you to manage various features such as anchor camera footage, 360-degree parking assistance, music playback, and settings for other devices like Mi Home appliances, all of which are customizable. The operation is intuitive, just like how you would operate a phone. With basic operation done, we press the start stop button to start the car, and the home screen will switch to this three-page interface. You can adjust the sizes and choose which one appears on the left or right, large or small. I even drag them around to customize the positions. Many interactions from the phone, including UID and logic, are transferred to the car system, making it incredibly intuitive. Another small detail is that you don't need to navigate through secondary menus for certain actions. For instance, playback controls are easily accessible directly from the main interface here. Now, to the most important part. Let me show you how the phone interacts with the core system. See the little phone icon here? I didn't click it before because I want to show you now. Just press it and the phone will mirror to the central control screen of the core. And the operation here is familiar, just like on your phone. You can open apps on your phone and seamlessly use them on the core screen. For example, open WeChat, add it to the core desktop, and then replying to messages or any other apps, or even watching a movie and making the full screen on the core desktop. You can also use the three finger gesture to choose which app shows in the front or press and hold the app to where you want. Similar to rearrange app icons, on your phone's home screen. Covering Xiaomi is still adapting more apps to fit the core screen, which adds wide range of possibilities for in-core entertainment. Besides system level UI settings and interactive connectivity, there's one thing we have to mention, which is the shower AI assistant. Like when you're at home, you can talk directly to the shower speaker. You can ask it remotely to turn on air conditioner in the car, turn on the seat heating, or lower the window trays. When you are in your SU7, you can also talk to your car to turn off the lights in your house if you forget to, store your vacuum cleaner, and open the curtains. What's more, if you think it's too much trouble to do one task one by one, you can just activate live home mode in the app. Then, as you can see, the TV, lights, shirts will be turned off, curtains will be opened, and the vacuum cleaner will start working. The same goes for return home mode. One of these can be set directly in the app. And you know what? You can set the distance for your return home mode or leave home mode. So, when I drive into or leave my neighborhood, I don't need to operate it with voice or through the app. It automatically detects when I arrive or leave, and then activates the return home mode or leave home mode. Now, people, vehicles, and homes are all integrated. The last thing I want to show you is one cool thing. You can synchronize destinations from your phone to the cross map, making navigations effortless. If you, for instance, your location via WeChat, you can simply copy and paste it from your phone to the cross screen. Though, most of the time, we may just talk to Shari Assistant, but one option, isn't it? Now, let's talk about the back seat. There is an attached tablet for entertainment, or you can use it to adjust the front seat to create more space for the rear and hit the back seat. And one more thing, suppose while driving, the driver in the front needs the rear passengers to help locate a particular place. At such times, the rear passengers all need to select the location and then click send to car. You can see the prompt on the top right corner. Upon clicking it, the navigation mode starts immediately. What a seamless interaction that is! In case you want to know, you can detach the tablet, take out the support, and see the cover on the seat. It looks neat. With all that said, let's talk about the driving experience. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to drive it myself. Firstly, there were too many people 
wait in the queue to try it out. And you could see the envy in the eyes when I got into the car as if I was stealing the throne. Secondly, I didn't get invited to drive it before the launch event. So guys, please subscribe and help me get to like million subs. Anyway, my friend Eva did get a chance, although only on the highway, not the cool NOA in urban areas. From her experience, she is an experienced driver, Eva was amazed by how briskly the car drives and feels smart, automatically identifying the speed of the road and ensuring it abides by it. For example, when needing to take an exit ramp ahead, it preemptively slows down and even during lane changes. It plans ahead. There are more small features, but she may still finalize them. So maybe we'll show you more later. Regarding the driving experience, the acceleration and deceleration curves are quite smooth. So you don't feel sudden changes. However, we feel that it lacks feedback on the dashboard, central screen, or through voice prompts when accelerating, decelerating, changing lanes, or maneuvering around larger vehicles. This could be improved to provide more reassurance to the driver. Overall, the driving experience is akin to driving a gasoline car, giving you a sporty feel. It seems like Xiaomi has tuned the car based on sports cars, definitely aiming to replicate that sporty sensation. But that's all from my friend Eva's driving experience. I will definitely provide a detailed driving review once I get a chance. So make sure to subscribe. Lastly, we measure the temperature both outside and inside the car after driving. Scrutinize average. As you can see, the Xiaomi SU7 offers excellent sun protection with a significant temperature difference between inside and outside of the car. However, we're not entirely sure if this uh, sun protection feature really matters as most people would turn on the air conditioner before getting inside the car anyway. That concludes the video for the Xiaomi SU7. I want to give credit to my content partners, Eva and Gavin, who are incredibly hardworking individuals and the only one authorized to use their content on YouTube. So if you see any similar footage as well, please report to me and I will take appropriate action. I'll be sure to provide a detailed driving experience once I get the chance, as I mentioned earlier. So please subscribe. I want to claim to have the best production for reviews, but I do strive to create genuine and informative videos for you. I'm Sammy, and I'll see you in the next one.